Hello, I'm David Tower, and welcome to the Theories of Everything program. Over the past few months, viewers, we've been examining some big questions, some big questions of existence. We categorised the sorts of topics in this series according to whether they were physical questions about the universe or the nature of reality, its building blocks, its past and its future. Whether they were questions about life, how life began and how it might evolve in the future. Questions about the mind, about consciousness, about subjectivity. So this series is a work in progress. It'll be continuously updated as the evidence flows in. If we return, for example, to the universe, which we will do in this current two program series on dark matter and dark energy. These are two major stumbling blocks for cosmologists at the moment in understanding the universe because it appears that only a small amount of the matter that we see around us uh, constitutes a small percentage of matter in the universe, around 5%. Uh, another large lump is something that we don't know but know it exists. Um, that accounts for about 25% and again around the rest of it the rest of mass energy is accounted for by this dark energy, this expansionary anti-gravity force that seems to be pushing our cosmos, ripping our cosmos apart. So, to or in order to understand the full picture of the universe, its shape, its density, its beginnings, its evolution, these two problems have to be solved. And they are well on the way to being solved, as we'll see in the program. Cosmologists, you see, astrophysicists, whoever, are a bit like Sherlock Holmes. They painstakingly gather their evidence and then make inferences from that. The inferences are original hypotheses or original theories. And then they constantly tune those. They gather more evidence. They gather evidence from the light coming from the universe, from stars, from planets. Um, they gather information by telescopes and spectrometers and particle colliders. They put it all together and they make better inferences. They wait for more evidence, better instruments in space, gathering gamma ray information, whatever it is, and add it into the models and improve the models and very doggedly and creatively push on until a theory or a group of theories emerge that can put that, uh, put that position fairly solidly, the one that they're looking for. And... Uh, this goes on and on, and it goes on, it's a model for all the sciences. What's happening in cosmology happens in biology, and psychology, and archaeology, and all the other major sciences, and it's a cooperative effort. So in these two programs, again, we'll be examining, in this program, the nature of dark matter and the current theories relating to it, and in our next program, the nature of dark energy. So what do cosmologists currently know about the composition of the universe? Well, it's taken a long time to piece this together, to get this far, but they, they're now fairly confident that they can break up the components into three categories. As described, briefly, first of all, ordinary matter, and again that constitutes, they believe, around 5% of the total mass energy in the universe. Ordinary matter is the stuff that's uh, defined in the standard model of physics. It's protons, neutrons, mesons, electrons, neutrinos, etc., and it's the stuff that feels the four forces. It feels the electromagnetic force, it feels gravity, it feels the strong and nuclear. It's influenced by the strong and weak nuclear forces. So that's all standard stuff, but unfortunately it doesn't, um, it doesn't quite gel with the physics of the cosmos. Galaxies rotate at quite a speed. Um, and when they do, there's forces applied which would normally fling those stars and components of a galaxy out into space if they weren't held together by gravity. Unfortunately, there's not nearly enough gravity to hold those stars together as they move around. There's around about a fifth of what's required, or a sixth of what's required to hold those uh, dynamic entities together. Now, the rest is what's put in the basket, the hard basket of dark matter, the other 25%, because it's concluded now that around about 
30% in total uh, of mass energy is made up of ordinary matter and exotic types of matter called dark matter. The other 70% is in the form of energy. Uh, again, that's uh, a form of anti-gravity, a form of uh, force that seems to be expanding the universe ad infinitum. So, what makes up that other 25%? Well, we'll go into that in detail in the next section of the program, but basically it's particles that were formed at the beginning of the universe and are still around, but they don't obviously don't feel the same forces as ordinary baronic matter. In other words, they, they certainly feel gravity because they've clumped together. Uh, and by the way, that's another piece of evidence for the, for the existence of dark matter the tiny fluctuations that formed the seeds of galaxies at the beginning weren't, didn't allow enough time for those galaxies to form with the current amount of matter that we see today in the time frame that's been available. So additional matter was required to bring those initial fluctuations to the form of to large scale galaxies. There are probably around about 20 different theories. Of those, there's half a dozen relating to ordinary matter. Some of them are on the brink of being washed out already, such as the failed star-type objects, for example. 